All right, so what I just finished doing in the last video was adding full spectrum effects to the tail and then to the whole body, right? Um, these are completely optional, but you might see the advantage. I really like what it did to the wing, and I like what it's doing to a lot of it, right? And I'll still play with it a little bit. So let's let's just take a look and survey how I've structured my layers. I'm going to label everything. This will help understanding it later when I put it onto a poster and when I do some extra effects with it that I want to show you. So the only thing missing now from all the different digital coloring handouts that you have access to and the things I've demonstrated and shown are color holds. And those are special effects that go on top of the black line work. Right. So here's our black line work on the very top. This is the coloring underneath. I'll just turn on. I have a blank white canvas. So on top of the blank white canvas, I have flat color. And gray is filling in anywhere I didn't pick a particular color, just so that everything's filled in. On top of that, I now have soft edge duotone shapes, both shadows and highlights, that softly transition the flat colors. On top of that, I have a, an overlay uh, layer. It's set to overlay where I dodged and burned. I was able to brighten and darken those soft edge tones. So that's what the soft edge color looks like with the overlay layer. And it improved it quite a bit. On top of that, I have my cut edge layers. Now. I have them at a lower opacity. It's only at 45%. I might up that a tiny bit. And I could try moving my overlay layer on top of my cut edge layer. And that's kind of nice. That didn't work, whatever that was. <laughs> so it was in between like this. I'm going to move this to, let's say, 53%. And then I can't decide if I want the overlay on top of it or not. I think I do want it on top. Okay, and then I added a full spectrum tail. And then I added full spectrum to everything. But you know what? I like the full spectrum tail better than my full spectrum everything tail. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that or erase it. Or just selectively erase it, right? Erase certain parts. So it really is kind of multicolor. That's all this stuff going on. I like that kind of red band going through. All right, is there anything else? I'm just going to do little hits, cutting away from the full spectrum in certain places. Remember I have the gradient that's pulling it darker towards the bottom. Yeah, I think this all works. Okay. Oh, I'm not so sure of the full spectrum on this scapula, on the shoulder blade. And I kind of erased out the full spectrum on the brand. But yeah, I'm liking, liking how all this has come together. So let's save it. I'll put my full spectrum in a folder together because these are the, the different types of coloring, of digital coloring. Flat color, duotone color, full spectrum color. And I'm going to label my uh, overlay dodge burn layer. Because if I wanted to, I can move that on top of the full spectrum and even heighten it further. And yeah, you know what? It's not bad. So, see that or this, that or this.
Or, let's see. Or what I can do is make a duplicate of it and move the duplicate above and then play with the opacity of it. We have just so many options. Masters and commanders of our digital domain. Okay, so now if I'm happy with that, make sure I save it. What else can I do? Well, I can add things on top of the black bread. So think of this as a sandwich. It has white on the bottom. The white bread's on the bottom. These are all the sandwich fixings. And then we have the black bread on the top, the black line. But you know what makes a sandwich really fancy? You really want to impress someone? You put, you don't add more in the sandwich. You use a toothpick and you put stuff on top of the sandwich. You know, like an olive or a little flag <laughs> or an umbrella. So these are what we call the special effects. I'm going to add a new layer, a new blank layer. I'm going to call it all in capitals color holds because these are the sparkly special effects. I might even mark it with red. So what do I want with a color hold? Well, is there anything I want to look sparkly? What do you guys think? What if, yeah, so what if the tail shouldn't have a black outline? Maybe it should look like it's glowing. So what I can do is go to my vector area, select the whole tail area, make a duplicate of the vector lines. I have to unlock it first, just for the tail. And I'm going to make this into a color hold. I'll mark it red. So how do I do that? I go to my layer effects on my outline that I copied and I say color overlay and I'm going to change that color to something different, right? Actually, I think a pink would be kind of appropriate. I can change it with just a straight color like that or I can change it to a gradient like that, right? I can use the same kind of bright rainbow gradient. but I can downplay it a little bit. So let's see how that looks on black, right? Versus without it. You see how the color hold makes a difference? Okay, then it looks, you know, like it's made of a different texture now, that's nice. It's not outlined in black, but I can also add a glowing effect, outer glow. Let's really dial that back. That's a little extreme. Take the size down. Ah, but now you see it looks even stronger. Let's see. Soft light. No, pin light. Okay. So just like we did. Uh, offsets for our logos. We can do that kind of thing for special effect color holds here. There we go. Ooh -hoo. And I can even make that a rainbow, as crazy as that is. That's pretty insane looking. Or I could just make it warm to cool or bronze. I'm kind of curious what the rainbow will do if I really take its opacity down, right? So now it looks very shiny and sparkly. And I can soften that, there we go and even give it a little bit of noise. You see that? So it's not perfectly smooth. It's got a little bit of, of distortion in the pixels. And that's just the tail. I can then rasterize that layer style so that then I can simply delete away from it. Let's 
so that it affects the bottom a little bit, but not a whole lot. And then I can cut away from the outside of it as well. I want to have contiguous on. So this is just a color hold on the tail with this soft glow around it, right, to make it look sparkly. Now what it doesn't have is highlights like a glinting sword might have. So that's something I can play with too. I'm gonna to put that, so this will be the, the rainbow tail color hold. But now with the regular color hold, I'm just gonna paint with white. Use my stylus, pressure sensitive. I'm gonna go ahead and make it uh, a hard, 100% hardness, and just kind of show you how it works. So what if I just put a sparkle right here? A little star, right? And then maybe another one right at the tip of the crystals. That makes sense, right? Maybe another little one here, a little starburst. The ones that are catching the light. Maybe a little sparkle in the eye. It's going a little far here. <laughs> if it goes on top of the line work, it is a color hole, right? So maybe I need a bunch of these little X's all over the tail, interfering with the line work, breaking up the edge. Maybe I need it. I'm going to really overdo it. On the wing. Okay, so I've got lots, right? Maybe on the tail of the snake. On the heart. Right here. But look how sparkly it is. Have it on the intestine. Look at all these sparklies. They're going over the top. Of course unicorn guts sparkle. What is his name? This is my little donkey. His name is Hubert. Okay. So, and then the snake is feeling left out, so the snake has to sparkle. The snake is named Peaches. Okay, now I'm gonna soften my sparkles just with a little bit of a soft eraser. And then I'm gonna play with Gaussian Blur to soften them even more. But what they will do is they will all sit on top of the line work. So if I'm unsure about it, I can make a duplicate before I do the Gaussian Blur. Because remember, it's very easy to, easy to soften edges. It's very hard to resharpen them. So that's what it looks like softened. Maybe I could soften them a little less because the filters will remember the last setting you used, right? So maybe I want something closer to that. Then I can try them together. That's very bold. Right? And I can play with different opacities. See how that looks on black, pretty good. And now the last thing I might do is take the whole line art underneath my rainbow tail, take the whole vector line art, don't even rasterize it, and just do a gradient overlay for it. So I have this big kind of rainbow gradient. Let's try reversing it. Or let's try just going not so extreme. Actually, I like the rainbow best. <laughs> 